So, hello everybody. Nice to see you here. It's uh, nice to have you here instead of uh, having a nice Java one sandwich or uh, being another uh, another uh, talk. So, uh, uh, today we are going to talk about CDI2 and we're going to try to make some live coding on CDI2. So, let's start by presenting myself. So, I'm Antoine Sabodurand, working for Red Hat. I'm the CDI2 spec lead. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter and GitHub and etc. Uh, I'm also working on the microprofile project, so uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll have a big use of CDI on macro pro macro profile. So uh, there will be some feedback from the microprofile project in CDI for the next version. So it's I'm very excited about about this. So what are we going to talk about? Uh, I will present you CDI 2 in two slides. So if you are not uh, totally aware of all the new stuff in CDI2, I also put a link to another presentation uh, regarding the, all the new feature of CDI2. And I don't have the time in 45 minutes to uh, list all those and make a live coding as well. During this uh, presentation, I will take existing code I presented here, uh, I think one year ago, regarding metrics integration with CDI. This integration was done in live coding, but with CDI 1, 2. Now I'm going to take this integration and show you how we migrate it to CDI 2. So most of the stuff we will see in this talk uh, will deal with advanced feature in CDI and extension, but there will be some, uh, uh, how to say, daily user stuff as well. But if you are not, very uh, uh, aware about CDI extension, you'll have to, to, to keep focus to, <laughs> to get it. Uh, so what are we going to do? We are going to switch the existing tests that are in this project and use the new CDI AC feature to uh, launch our test. So uh, the tests uh, currently are using Archelian, uh, we will use CDI SE to launch them. And after that, we will migrate the existing metrics extension to CDI2. Uh, if we have time, I hope so, if the, the live demo gods will be wi with us, uh, I'll uh, add an, an asynchronous event to the, uh, to the project as well. And we will finish it. OK, so let's get started. So what's new in CDI2? Two slides. So uh, we added uh, the support for Java SE. As we are running now in Java IC, uh, we had to add feature to, to allow activation of request context because request context doesn't have, how to say, the same meaning in Java IC that it could have in Java EE. So uh, we added feature to activate this context in the context of, of Java IC, but it can also be used on Java EE. We had a lot of enhancement uh, on event. So the most uh, important announcement being the asynchronous event support and the event ordering support. So uh, you, you can check, as you see, you can check the, the, the talk uh, in the link below to have all the details. We also uh, added announcement to interceptor. So now you can use interceptor on the produced bin before it wasn't uh, possible. So now you can add an interceptor to produced bin. Uh, we also had some helpers like the built-in annotation literals, so it's not a big deal, but now you, you won't have to create your, your, own, uh, your own annotation literal to, uh, to create an annotation instance. And we introduced the configurator API, which we're going to see a lot in this talk. So the feature that we will use in this talk is the support for Java IC. The event enhancement, uh, perhaps in the end, with the asynchronous observer, the built-in annotation literal, and the config configurator API. OK, so that's the two slides for CDI2. If you want to, to know more about CDI2, the link is, is below. OK, so let's start with the existing project, Matrix CDI. So a big, a big a fast uh, review of the Matrix project. So Matrix is a very simple project from the Wizard. It, it provides you a different metrics type. So you have counter, gauge, meter, timer. You can 
use it to uh, have metrics on your uh, project. So you can use different reporter method to, uh, to get the information, JMX console, uh, the log, etc. You have in the center of the, of the project the metric registry, uh, where all, the, all your metrics are uh, stored. And uh, drop result provide uh, you with annotation that you can use on your um, own framework to implement uh, AOP, so to be able to annotate a method or a, or a, a class with time to count, etc. But there is no code behind this. You have to develop it. Uh, and that's it. So that's for a, a quick review of the drop result. And now. Last year, we created uh, the integration uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the metrics with CDI. So what did we do? Uh, we achieved the following goal. Uh, we added the capacity to produce and inject multiple metrics. So metrics are the timer, gauge, meter, etc., of the same type. So we can produce them with CDI. Uh, we uh, added all the code needed to have the metrics annotation usable as interceptor. And uh, we also added the fact that if you access metrics through uh, CDI with the art inject annotation or through the metric registry, uh, classical uh, way of getting access to do those metrics, you get the same metrics if you use the same name, uh, which is not the Obligatory the case because mandatory case because you when you ask for a metric to the metric registry registry and this metric sorry doesn't exist it is created automatically. So we started from here. So this is a very basic code using metrics. So no CDI here. So here you see there is I have a uh, class helper uh, with the registry which is a static field. And I have a method for which I want to have a timer. So what I, what I do is to ask to the registry a timer called my timer. If this, if this timer exists, uh, I get the existing timer. If it doesn't, metrics creates for me. I use this timer to start to measure time with the timer uh, context. I do all the stuff I have to do in a try uh, uh, catch. Uh, block and in the final block, I stop the timer. So that's very basic code without CDI. And in the end, after the integration, we ended there. So we added the capacity to produce uh, different metrics. So here we are producing two timer, one uh, called my timer, a second one called my second timer, very original, and the capacity to use. Uh, the annotation provided with metrics. So here we use the attained annotation and we say, okay, this method should be, uh, um, how to say, uh, measured by metrics with the timer, my timer. So we, we are, will have the my timer, timer, sorry, uh, retrieved from met metrics registry and the time of the execution of the method will be uh, recorded. So that's what the, the current code is doing. So now let's visit this code a bit because uh, if we want to migrate it to do CDI2, it's, perhaps it's better to, to get it. Uh, yeah, it's, here, it's there. So let's start with the, the, the test uh, of the project to be sure that uh, we are uh, testing uh, things, interesting things. So this test right now is using Archelian. Uh, everybody knows Archelian? Okay, so for those who don't, Archelian is a way to uh, uh, build a micro package of your application with all the components you need and have a, a, a server-like environment, but you have a lot of different plugins for Archelian, so you can decide what you want, but here it, it, it's to, to have a Java e Lite uh, with a, a CDI uh, deployment and use uh, the feature of CDI. So you can, with Archelian, you can use the art inject in your test to inject uh, different bin. 
So in an Archelian uh, test, you have a method annotated at deployment, the static method. In this method, you describe what you are creating, in, what you are putting in your archive. So here I'm creating, <coughs> sorry, I am creating um, an archive called test.war, and I'm putting all the elements in the package or, or CDI server metrics. I also, you, I'll also add information from outside, so I'm putting in my war uh, both jar, the metric score, and the metrics annotation. So I can package it in the, in the war to have all, need, all this information. And of course, I add the bins XML to activate CDI. And yeah, and lastly, lastly, I'm activating the extension, so I have an extension, we will see it after that. Uh, I am adding this extension here in the package, and I return the archive. So Archelian take this and make the deployment. My tests are uh, simple. So the first test is uh, we are testing should interceptor be called. So I'm calling uh, a method on the MTB uh, bin, which is injected here. If we look at this method, you can see that, oops, sorry. You can see that uh, this method is annotated with at timed, uh, with the my timer, 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 and we want to check that the timer wasn't, was called during, uh, the, uh, during the call. So we are testing here. So we are getting the timer called my timer, and we are uh, getting the information how many times we are called, and we are doing an assertion here. The second uh, test is uh, the test about having um, injected metrics through CDI and uh, retrieved metrics through the metric registry being the same. I, re I repeat again, when you are doing this registry timer and you put a name here, if this name wasn't already used, if you didn't uh, uh, already uh, uh, try to retrieve uh, uh, metrics with the name my timer, it will be created automatically. So the idea here is to make sure that the timer I inject it here with the name my timer is the same than the oops, sorry, than the timer I retrieve it with the same name from the registry. We are doing this test, okay? And uh, yeah. And lastly, I'm testing the fact that uh, uh, all the metrics I have declared in my uh, program, my application, are registered in the, re in the registry. That, uh, that's the last test. Okay. So if we, yeah, if we go to the, to the extension that, that does the, the magic here. Let me, okay. So uh, my CDI extension, who, who is not familiar with CDI extension here? Okay, oh, only one guy, great. Uh, sorry for you, <laughs> I, I'm going a little back on, uh, on CDI extension. So extensions are a way to uh, uh, modify all the metadata you have in CDI. So mainly to register new bin, to modify existing bin, uh, and to uh, modify, add annotation, roughly add annotation on existing uh, element to add feature to the, to the element. So here in this extension, we have a different uh, kind of method. So for instance, the first method is very simple. We are observing the before bin discovery lifecycle event. So when you're when your uh, container, CDI container is starting, it fires uh, all kinds of events in certain order. So here we are listening to the first event, the before bin discovery. And in the before bin discovery, I can add one annotation as a qualifier, as a CDI qualifier. So here, I'm taking the metric uh, annotation that I don't own that come from the uh, uh, metric, and I'm adding it as a qualifier. Uh, the second uh, method here 
uh, is about interceptor. So I want to take the at timed annotation coming from matrix and say, okay, now it should be an interceptor binding because when I get it, it's nothing. It's only an annotation. So I want to declare it as an interceptor binding. So I'm doing the same. I'm observing the same event you see here, and I'm using the before being discovery uh, method, which is called add interceptor binding. In this uh, uh, method, I have to add a new annotated type of the interceptor binding I want to add. I could, I could have added uh, the class directly, but it's not possible here because the, if we go to the, the timed annotation, you see here the timed annotation has two member uh, name and absolute. The problem is if, you, if we don't add information to this member, they will be used to distinguish two uh, different version of the annotation. So if you write, for instance, uh, at time the, of my timer of, uh, or at time of my timer two, the, uh, there will be two different interceptor bindings. So I have to create two different interceptors, one for the at time my, uh, my timer and at time my timer two. So I have to add uh, specific meta annotation <laughs> on those members, it's the non-binding uh, annotation. So that's the reason why I cannot add directly, I cannot add directly the time uh, class here. I have to create an annotated type which will add those non-binding on all the members. So I have created an implementation and that's what we are doing in uh, CDI uh, 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 extension most of the time, implementing the SPI to add our feature here. So we will uh, have, a, have a look at that later, but I created um, my own annotated type to add those non-binding uh, stuff on it. Uh, the third is a very interesting uh, uh, part of the extension. It's the part of the extension that uh, uh, catch all the produced metrics. So here I observe all the producer that define uh, a metric. So I'm doing this because I'm observing the event process producer. Uh, the wildcard here say this, uh, pro this producer can be in any class, but they should produce T. T being anything that extends metric. So all the producer that produce a metric Will be uh, will trigger this uh, this lifecycle event. I'm also injecting the bin manager. I can do that in any uh, observer of the lifecycle event. What I'm doing here is I'm testing. Uh, do I have the metric annotation on this uh, on this metric producer? If it's the case, I retrieve the name, and uh, with this name. I create my own producer that will do some magic stuff. We will see that later. But it, uh, roughly, it will check if the it will check if the the, the metric is already in the registry. If it's the case, it uh, instead of creating the metric, it gives it gives me it give me uh, the metric in the registry. And if it doesn't exist in the registry, it creates it add to registry to the registry and, and returns it. Okay. Sorry. And the last uh, method in, the, in this extension, um, in fact, is the method that makes sure that all the metrics that are declared as a producer will be created before the application runs. Uh, that that ensures the fact that I will have the same metric in the registry and metric that, in, that I will inject. Okay? So uh, we can run this test right now. I will go uh, deep, deep, deeper in the code after that. Uh, I don't know if I can run it right now. Yeah. So I'm launching the test. So here, my, my I, I, I didn't uh, mention it, but my test used testng, uh, but you can use uh, gunit uh, without any problem. I'm using test, testng because it will be easier later with the um, the CDI SE to uh, bootstrap the, the, the container. So I have my free test passing, 
And I want to show you that this code here is not uh, uh, dummy code or, uh, or funny stuff. So if I comment one of those uh, uh, method, uh, I think sh some of the, my, my tests won't pass. Yeah. So here I commented, uh, you see, I commented the, the part that had the time as interceptor binding. And oh, the test that is called should the time interceptor called uh, don't pass. So it's not, a, it's a real code here. Okay, wow. Okay. Uh, so let's start. Perhaps I have some slide on the topic. No. Okay. Okay. Let's start with the switch to uh, SE. So, before switching to SE, we're going to switch to CDI2. So, to switch to CDI2, I have to go in my uh, PAMXML and I have to change. Do you see? Uh, is it readable? Okay. So I'm going to change the version of CDI which is here. And I have also uh, to change the version of the implementation. So right now I'm using Weld 245. I'm going to switch to the last version of Weld 3, which is the reference implementation uh, for CDI. And I will have the Weld 3.0.1 final, and uh, I have a change, I guess. Let me check. No, it should, should be okay. So now, let me show you that we are running CDI2. So if we, if we look at the beginning, yeah. If we look at the console here, you see that the version of well is 2.4.5, okay? If I run my test again, should be 3.0.1. Crossing finger. Okay, okay, you see 301. So I, I've switched to CDI2. Oh, great. Now let's do a, a bit more. So we are going to use the CDI AC Bootstrap API. So it's looking like this. So we introduce uh, two new uh, interfaces, uh, one interface and one class, by the way. So the AC container, uh, container uh, interface and the AC container initializer interface. So with the initializer, you have a, a through a, a builder pattern, you can create a new instance of the initializer. You have a, a lot of uh, uh, feature. You can uh, uh, disable uh, bin discovery and add all your bin uh, one by one. Uh, you can uh, add the property. Here we are adding a bin class. And in the end, when everything is okay for you, when we have the right configuration for your um, uh, your uh, container, you call the initialize and it returns you a living container with the, uh, of the of AC container type. So here in the example, I'm using the container to uh, retrieve a bin uh, of type my service. Okay, very simple. Because the container is implementing the instance interface. If you are using the programmatic lookup in CDI, you probably know what I mean. Okay, so we are going to use this uh, in our test. So if I go back to the test, which is here, I'm going to remove all the Archelian stuff. So here I will not extend Archelian, and I will remove this method. OK. So let's create a method to launch uh, our container, something like Okay, start me up. I don't have the, the music, I, I won't sing. Okay, so I will use what we just saw. So I'm uh, uh, creating oh, AC container, sorry. An AC container variable with the right spelling and using the AC container initializer creating a new instance and adding uh, the, the package 
for my test. So um, uh, I have to add. So I can add the package uh, through uh, the class. So I can say, OK, add the package with the, the class. So I can take this class. So I'm adding all the stuff uh, in the test. And I can also add, I have also to add all the, the package in the, um, uh, in the project. So I'm going to take matrix extension class. So I'm adding here all the package in the test and in the project uh, from, for, for this class. I also have to add the extension, so calling the add uh, extension and putting here the, uh, the class of my extension matrix extension. Whoa. I have a misspelling metric extension dot <coughs> class. Don't know why. Okay, and should be okay. So I can call the initialize here. With the dot, it will be better. Okay. And so now I have my container. Uh, so if my test here uh, weren't uh, using uh, injection, I could stop there. I have the container, it's okay. But you see here, I'm injecting stuff in my test. So I have to do an extra trick to uh, 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 perform injection on my test. For that, I have to retrieve the bin manager. So what I'm doing here uh, could be done uh, in uh, uh, G unit uh, extension or a test ng listener to have something cleaner. So uh, it's only to show you. Uh, so I can retrieve the bin manager from the container. Okay. With the bin manager, I will be able to uh, create what is called uh, an, injunction, an injunction target. So let's go for the injection target, and the type will be the my uh, the, the the type of the test class. And uh, this injection target will be created by the bin manager. I have to provide sorry for that. I have to provide an annotated type. So create it here. Okay. It should be okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, it will be more readable if I do something like this. Okay. And after that, I will use this injection target to perform injection on my test object. So I'm injecting this, and I'm creating a creational context as it's not uh, a bin with the with a scope. I'm creating a creational context with null, so I have a default a default one. And last but not least, if I want this code to be started before all my tests, I will use the at before class. Oops. So in test ng, you can use the, this before class on non-static method, which is not the case in JUnit. The reason why I switched to test ng in my test. But there is uh, some trick with um, JUnit 5, I guess. I saw that. So here, what, I'm, what I've done, I removed all the Archelian reference, and I created my own boot uh, section. So it's OK. To be honest, it's a bit messy, the part here. But you can imagine having your own listener doing that automatically. So now I can launch uh, my test based only on CDI SE, and it's not working. OK. <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah, that's normal. Why do I have, I have this? Because I only add to my uh, project uh, an implementation for Java E. I don't have all the class for Java EC, so I have to change in my POM uh, all the, the dependency for weld, taking a bigger package for weld. So let's get to the 
Okay, that's here. So I, I don't need uh, I don't need Arclean anymore. So here I can add dependency. Not sure I will uh, find it. It's a weld. Yeah, it's this one. Weld AC shaded, and I'm going to take the last one, which is which is not here. See, yeah. So three. Oh, one final. So I'm, I'm adding this. So I'm removing the, the dependency uh, of weld only for Java E and putting the one for Java C. Otherwise, I won't be able to bootstrap uh, the, um, uh, the container in Java C. Yeah, it was to, to make sure that uh, everyone was following. OK. So now I'm running the, the test with my own container. So here you see. Uh, that I have new information here regarding the transactional service that I don't have, but I don't need transaction in my test, so okay. So the interest of that uh, is Arclean may be a bit heavy in some use, some use case. So la, la, there you can use uh, uh, the minimum CDI stuff to, to play your test. And to show you that, to show you that the, um, uh, this bootstrapping is uh, working everywhere. I will switch my implementation and use the other implementation, which is Open Web Beans. And I have an Open Web Beans uh, AC, which is here. So the last version of Open Web Beans AC is the 201. So here I remove weld, switch to Open Web Beans running the test the same way. So my, don't change my code, only the dependency. Crossing finger. So it's working. By the way, you see that open web bins is more verbose at the launch time, but it can be interesting because it lists all the, all the bins it discovered at, at put time. OK. So now we, we are using CDI AC. So let's. Uh, let's go to our extension and start migrating. Checking time. Wow, I have. Uh, <laughs> I'm speaking too. Okay, let's start with the first part. Here we don't have to do anything. Metric as qualifier, we can keep it because we are only using a class. It becomes interesting here. You see, we are adding an interceptor binding. Uh, with an annotated type I have to create it. So what is doing this class? Annotated type uh, with all method non-binding. So in this annotated type, I'm all, all, only decorating an annotated type. So here, delegate. And I'm returning all the value of the delegate, the delegate annotated type, except when I ask for the methods. When I ask for the methods, I will take those methods, and instead of returning the methods, I will uh, replace them by a non-binding annotated method which decorates the uh, method. It's a bit complicated. The, the idea is to say, OK, I want to, to, to be able to say, I have non-binding on this method uh, where it's not on the original uh, uh, source. So these non-binding annotation method is doing quite the same, and it's only uh, doing stuff regarding the addition of the non-binding to the method. So when I ask for the annotation on the method, I take the original annotations and add non-binding. And when I uh, am asked about the presence of non-binding, if it's uh, if it's that, I return true. So I have, for this little feature of adding non-binding on all my uh, elements, I have two class here, plus an helper class here, non-binding literal, to have something clean. So three class, three classes. I will replace, replace it with a simple CDI2 code. So here I can use the new feature from CDI uh, the configure interceptor binding. So instead of adding my interceptor binding like that, I can't configure it. Uh, I can get the methods of the interceptor binding. I will close that. 
And for each of these methods, I will take the method and I don't, I don't need the curly bracket, but anyway. And I will add uh, non-binding. I'm not using the I'm not using the non-binding literal I created anymore because I have now the literal in the, the spec. And that's it. Oops. I'm, I'm, what's the problem here? Ah, yeah, I have to. I have to. Sorry, I have to give the. Of course, I have to give the the class. Okay, so here I removed three big class and two big class and one one small and put something very small instead. Let's try if it's working. Yeah, I have 10 minutes to show you the, the end, but it will be uh, quite easy. Uh, next is one of the uh, most tricky part uh, of the code. So the idea here, I'm gonna show you, the idea here is when I detect this in my code, so I'm producing here a timer, which is a metric. It, it extends the, the metric, it implements the metrics interface. I want to be able to not execute this code uh, each time. I want to be able to check the, the registry if a timer, if a metric with the name my timer exists. If it exists, I return the existing one. If it doesn't, I create uh, the metric, add to the registry, and return the stuff, okay? So in fact, this, this code is the way that my user will be uh, declare uh, my, uh, the metrics. And I'm adding in an in extension, uh, the tricky part that will uh, avoid creating extra metrics if it's not needed. So to do that, here in my uh, 1.2 code, I have uh, to listen the, let me to listen the process producer as I showed at the beginning. Uh, I'm retrieving the metric annotation on the producer because I need the name. It retrieves the name of the uh, of the metric I'm uh, requesting. Okay, and I'm changing the producer that uh, uh, was intercepted by the observer by a producer I created myself. So that's the, the metric producer. It's the same that uh, we, we see before. Here, metric producer decorate the existing producer, okay? And call all the method of the decorated uh, producer except when it comes to produce the element. So when I want to produce the element, I'm retrieving the registry. Here, it's a bit complicated. We will see that we, it will be simplified after that. Uh, I'm testing, does the registry contain a metric with the name uh, I received? If it's the case, uh, if it's not the case, I register <coughs> this new matrix by calling the produce method of the decorated uh, producer. And in the end, I return the, the matrix from the registry. So I will use this code, but I will use it in simple, simpler way. So I will get rid of this class, go back to my extension. Yes, okay. So here, this line won't be used anymore. And I will use, so PP is my process producer and I have a configure producer in it. The configure producer allow me to define a function to produce uh, the, the, the element, the, the bin. So I will produce it with, so I receive a creational context, the CDI will provide it for me, and, and I will put the code, sorry, I will put the code here that I copied from my previous 
producer, and I will change a few things. So here I don't need that anymore because I have a very convenient way to retrieve uh, instance in CDI2. And this convenient way use the bin manager. So I can create an instance. So that's the instance you know uh, as the programmatic lookup mechanism. So I can do this here. This instance I can select metric registry type, okay, and I can get the instance. So here I have a simpler way to retrieve the, the registry. Here I'm not using metric name but name, which is here. Okay, the same here. Okay, and the same here. It's no more T but it's X, X but T. I'm not even sure that I need that. And uh, I need to retrieve this uh, decorate, so let's do this here. So it's a producer of uh, T. Okay, decorate. Yep. And it's, I retrieve it from the process producer. Okay, so I won't need this line anymore, and I don't need the class I created anymore. So in a very uh, uh, Java 8 way, I can uh, have a cl uh, cleaner code, launching the test, crossing finger. Okay, I didn't test with uh, OpenWebBeans before, so it's a, it's a lie. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have a few minutes left to do the last uh, observer in our extension. So here, um, I have an observer that uh, observes the event after deployment validation, so where everything is ready to, to, to run my application. I have this event after deployment validation. And I, I, what I want is to trigger the creation of, of all the producer in my uh, application to make sure that they are registered in the metric registry to avoid the fact that I can retrieve a different metric if I use the metric <coughs> registry or if I inject the, the metric. So here, I'm gonna remove this and use something smaller. So I gonna do what I done before, create instance. So from this instance, I can select uh, the element I want to, to retrieve. So here it will be uh, metric, but not this one, it's the, yeah, this one. Take care because they are uh, the metric annotation and the metric um, interface, okay. And I want to uh, retrieve all the metrics because uh, I have the annotation on them. So I will take the any uh, qualifier, use the literal and instance. Okay, so here I have a collection. I have a way to iterate on the collection of all the metrics defined through a producer in my um, application. So now I can use the uh, for each for my collection. And for each metrics, in fact, I do nothing I want only to trigger their creation. So it will trigger the code in the producer here and make sure that all the metrics will be registered like this. I, and it's make, it makes the code uh, uh, far, far easier to, to read. Easier to read, sorry. And should be okay. And are we finishing on that? And it's, and it's working. Okay, that's it. I think I don't have any time left. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll be outside, ready to, to answer. And uh, I encourage you to, to check the, um, uh, the slides regarding uh, CDI2, a new, new feature, uh, to have all the, the elements that were presented in this talk. Thank you.